take it anymore. Where was it? Hey guys, Uncle Grouchy here. And I have ran into a problem that so many of us has probably run into before. And that is, when your favorite little leader air hose, the uh, it just bites the dust. I, this one started splitting and leaking and I want to uh, fix the air hose. But this is not an acceptable uh, connection. I really hate having these things go through my hands and catching on shit when you're dragging it across the floor and this one isn't much better this is a uh, one of those side pinch style rings and you still got you got to put tape over it and everything to keep it from catching and, and grabbing on shit so while I was at the the homeless depot or Lowe's or one of them grabbing some fittings to do a hot water tank I started looking at the peck section now this has become popular over the years it's a plastic water pipe flexible that you can put everywhere and then you uh, use these uh, crimp on style furls with a special tool of course and you crimp the pecs over a fitting and you've got instant water connection so it's sort of like um, kind of a mix of a rubber hose and PVC where you don't have to do any soldering and crap like that. anyway you, you know what this crap is so I thought I'd give it a whiz so I got a 3 8 pex compression furl these are made of copper and I'm about ready to drop it. There it goes. And that fits just fine over my smaller air hose. Now the thing with PEX is the piping, I think it's a polyurethane style, is pretty rigid as far as uh, a tubing goes. It's flexible, but it's still, it's a pretty stiff material. And it's sized uh, within its brand or, or type uh, to a certain size, and the furls are a certain size, so the squash factor of the crimp is all factored in to get a seal but when you're trying to adapt this with something like a rubber airline well all that goes out the window because now you have a soft hose you're trying to squeeze down far enough you can tell just by looking at that one how much squeeze is going on to uh, to get the seal where this particular furl and the tool used to squash them are not going to probably squeeze that much. I don't know, but I'm going to try anyway because I figured I'd keep this around for maybe some future plumbing projects. So, I went and got me some of these furls and I picked up the pocket PEX tool. The tight wad way to uh, use this type of plumbing and you just squeeze this thing with a pair of channel locks to uh, squish down these furls. And I got that just to have and I can take some measurements off it or use it as a, uh, a base point to make something maybe to put in the hydraulic press. I don't know. But uh, we may be making use of this and maybe not. But I do have that starting point. So here's my raw airline end. And this is a suitably sized hose barb. And it slides in there just fine and it will, and, uh, it will seal fine if I put a clamp on it. And it's kind of hard to get back off again, so I'm not going to push it all the way on. But the issue is, once I put the barb in, because these are solid crimp rings, I can't really slide that up there into position. And it's really hard to push if it's already in position and I try to smack this in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a couple of things. On the lathe, I'm going to put a slight chamfer inside these rings to allow it to sort of skim over the rubber without tearing up the outer jacket and we'll use some soapy water or something as a lubricant and put a couple of these rings on with this system and see how it works out so that's the uh, the plan so follow along in my adventure to see if this thing shoots across the room or it actually provides a viable fix now the cool part is my lathe is just big enough to pass an air fitting through the tailstock so it's going to be neat is after I get this thing uh, chamfered up I can feed the hose through the back and we'll use the tailstock to squish it on and then take it off and put the, the crimpies to it. Well, let's get started with that. So I'm going to chuck up one of these rings. I'm going to use two, so I'm going to wind up chamfering both of them. I'm going to chamfer at least one side of the first ring to get it on. And I may chamfer the back side of the second ring also, just so it's not cutting into, well, I'll, I'll explain that as we go. So I got a ring in there, I gotta be careful not to compress it, otherwise, uh, why, you know, it's kind of dumb to put a compression ring on after you've already compressed it. That would just be silly. 
Well, let's uh, let's find a suitable tool that would work on this. And we'll zoom you in to see what's going on. And we'll grab Tom Lipton's handy dandy all purpose. Oh, can't use my air because my this is happened to be the <laughs> the air hose that broke. We'll grab the all purpose focus tool that Tom came out with a little bit ago and just to throw a quick chamfer on that. I imagine I could use um a uh chamfering tool. But that might grab too much and cause this to spin. This I can just be cutting a teensy bit at a time. But we're just going to see what happens. I don't know. I just want a little ramp on there. I'm going to lift it off the center because when you're doing small diameters in the ID, you need to get off the center line. And let's hope nothing ugly happens. Nope. That did not work. It slips into... Call it not too bad. I guess I can throw another one in the back just to keep the pressure even. So it looks like I'm going to have to take the chuck off, but then I'll have to put the chuck back on. And, uh, yeah. one more time. <laughs> Only because I'm getting lazy now. Let's, uh, let's get this out of the way. Yeah, slick, oily thing here, and I'm trying to get a good grip on it. One more time. If it doesn't work, switch it over. I probably am better off trying chamfer tool it's because it'll put equal pressure to the back side of the chuck. Maybe that will be sufficient. But we'll try a single cutter first to get the smoothest chamfer on there. And if that doesn't work, we've got the, uh, the multi tooth, multi edge style that tends to chowder things up. Let's grab Chuck. Need one of those. Nope, that does not work at all. But I might have got just enough chamfer. Let's take a peek. figure I don't need much but I do need to make sure that's smooth and that's really not doing <laughs> exactly what I want okay Quit being a lazy asset all this to make it yeah I could buy the reusable air fittings but they only come in certain stock sizes and I haven't found one for the smaller size hose which is more like a you know how damn Hoses and pipes never match up the real world size like a half inch round is a half inch a half inch pipe is like seven eighths or some shit like that So trying to interpolate between a standard three eighths hose or a quarter inch hose or five sixteenths hose or seven sixteenths hose It, it drives you bananas Now I'm already bananas as it is well, That's why we're going through all this mess Just to make something work you all can sit back there and go, nah, you're just wasting your time. And like, yeah, that's what I do all the time out here. Kill time until I die. That's what hobbies do. Make you forget how crappy things are. And if you're lucky, you'll perish during one of those uh, happy hobby times. And you won't know what hit you. Yeah, kind of bleak, huh? They're really using air hose right now. <laughs> Son of a bitch.
Yes, this is my collet truck. Uh, who is it? Oh, hell. I haven't got the YouTube up. One of my viewers, one of my six viewers, keeps asking about these. And uh, this was turned down from a piece of barbell. I'm pretty sure because I didn't have any real steel that thick. Cast iron is really the way you want to go. Anyway, since the crystalline structure tends to dampen vibrations and ringing compared to aluminum or straight steel. So, and one of the first projects I did, I figured machine parts are made out of cast iron. That's what I'd use. So, yeah, I took a smaller uh, dumbbell that was just small enough where I could put it into my largest chuck with the jaws reversed. And I made up this, uh, this hub plate here and then bored it and then pressed in a made up collet nut or a collet body and it's been fantastic ever since it was done and they're really cool because uh, you make it a little bit long which I did to get my table underneath it but if it gets danged or banged up then uh, you just go ahead and freshen up your taper here with a small grinder true it up take a little bit off your nose because whenever you uh, work on your taper of course your collet is going to sit farther back inside uh, the collet or the chuck body and you want it to be able to sit in good without the ring hitting the back end I've got a while to go yet before I have to worry about that so I'm good there I can I can probably do 10 or 12 oh that is sticky and nasty Whatever glue, or not glue, <laughs> it feels like glue, whatever grease I had on there has um, has turned to goo, and you don't want that. And there's the trains. <laughs> How do you guys know when I turn on the camera, you son of a bleeper? Oh yeah, that, that got nasty. All winter it was nice, but summer come around, I run a fan a little while, and it just evaporated all the vile little... E volatile volatile um, all the liquidy stuff and left behind all the Yankee stuff so I'll we'll squirt that with some WD-40 and continue on with our lives but let's finish putting the nuts on otherwise it's gonna flop off and make a big mess yeah I wonder if there's any uh, silicone is so nasty to once it gets on something it's a real pain in the ass to get it out and nothing else will stick to it which I imagine that's a good thing for lubrication but I still don't like the feeling of working with silicone uh, too slippery and nasty like uh, you know you buy a used car or you get it detailed and they squirt that armor all all over everything and you can't even hold on to the steering wheel because they squirt the damn thing down just to make it so cute and shiny and uh, then you have to get some strength high strength alcohol to go and try to get that shit off just so you can make a left turn I don't know what goes through people's minds <sighs> okay so that's feeling nice again All right, so I'll grab a, one of our, our little crimpy rings and that's too big so we don't want that one grab this one so put it in the nut first because if it expands out you'll never get it in and then we take our second one which was here just a moment ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to shove it in the hole. Just like a so, but maybe not that far. I have it sticking out just a little proud so I can work with it. I had two of these rings right here. Well, that's why you buy a hundred when you need two because um, they just walk off. Okay, we'll stick another one in the back to equalize our clamping pressure. May not be needed, but some things I can be anal about. Let's give that a snug. And let's see what we get now. Let's put it in gear. See what we get now. And that looks true enough. My tool is going to be able to fit in there. That 
went pretty painless. Got that inside edge, see if it curled a lip in there. Just a little one. Oops. Little hit with the uh, eBird tool took care of that. So that one is ready to go. Yeah, all this crap just to fix an air hose. Ed, you always gotta do things a long way around. Well, yeah. Marking time, baby. That's all we're doing. That one's good. Pop that out. Trade places with the one in the back. Now we should be ready to do the actual crimping process. See, it didn't take that long. I mean, now I'll put the chuck back on. That's important. Otherwise, I'll have to cut the hose to get the darn collet off. That would be silly also. Good enough for what we're doing. Now this is just going to become a fixture. So I'm going to take my hose and shove it right up the patootie of my headstock. I'm going to open this a little bit and out it comes. We're going to grab one of our fancy little rings and make sure we get the correct order. Or I should have made that one deeper. And that will go on next. So I'm going to take actually I don't have to. I can just do the first one. So let's Tighten that down to where we're just keeping that ring from going through. So we've just got a light grip on the hose. For now, we'll adjust that as the fitting goes inside. So I'm going to put the end on, like so. Now we'll bring out our little soapy water. That hasn't been squirted in two years. Come out of that bottle, you son of a... Of course, the soap or the air stream is going to dry it up real quick. But that way it's not something that will stay forever. Once it dries out, it will the grip will come right back. I'm going to use the chuck and press it on like so. How's that for a neat idea, huh? Oh, shit. No. Oh, that sucks ass. I should have opened this farther because the barb, when it went in there, was a wider diameter and it caused that to pinch on that son of a gun. And there goes another inch of hose. And that's the part I said, yeah, we'd have to adjust as we went. And I didn't adjust it. So now I've got to pry these rings off again. God, I'm stupid. But that's why I brought you along. I make these mistakes so you don't have to. Of course, they're going like, well, hell, we wouldn't try something stupid like that anyway. We ain't idiots. We'll go buy the proper air fittings. Ah, damn it. Oh, and it went on so well, too. <laughs> now I got to go to the vise and work these off. Okay, that wasn't too horribly onerous. Let's take a peek. So when the first ring is all the way up front, 
that's going to get us one good ceiling point right in here. Oh, you can't see because you're so far away. So when this one gets squashed, this rib right here is going to get a good seal and that would be like the one that keeps the hose from getting yanked out and the other one's going to be like a backup seal and that would probably get two. So that should be, all three of those barbs should get a good seal on them. Yeah, I'm overthinking it. Calm down, Ed. Home. All right. Let's not do the same mistake twice. Squishy. Squishy. Barb. Okay, we'll go a little bit looser this time. Put a little soap back on there. Even if it dries out, it's still providing some kind of lubrication. I don't know how far I can loosen this before it slips through. But I'm not sure I should probably just stop right there, huh? So I can feel the tail end of the barb right about there. The uh, the act of squishing these on has has mushed the rubber up ahead of it. Whether it'll be a detriment or not, I don't know. But if I keep squishing, that's got no place to go, and it's. Not going to help my cause any. I don't feel like getting in there with a razor blade and digging all that up. So, I think we're going to be okay. So now we want to squish that sucker in place. Take one of these and plug it in. And we'll just stick this in the chuck. Can you guys see? Probably not. And we'll just hold that loosely. To, uh, keep it from going anywhere and we'll grab our handy dandy tool and a big honking pair of pliers and see what happens huh. I could just put that in the mill vise and squish it down couldn't I well, we'll try doing one ring at a time which isn't hard to do I have the playroom but if we do the back one first That'll come down to size, and then we'll scoot over to the, the inside one. That way this one will already be squished, and we'll mostly be squishing this one and not be getting up on the back end of the barb fitting here. So we need a big pair of pliers. They suggest a lot. They, no, they don't suggest. They demand you use a big pair of locking pliers. And the reason that, not because they're locking pliers, it's because they've got this uh, cantilever action going on. That gives you more squish for your squeeze. Just fart around with this stupid tool. Yeah, I can see why I saw a lot of these returned back in open packages at the store because they must be a little frustrating to use. And this really is the wrong jaw style to use. These are flat jaws, where a curved jaw would be able to get a better grip on the tips of these things. You know, this stupid table is in the way. Let's move it. Okay. Now can you see what we're doing? We're squishing down. Squishy bits. So you squeeze it down so far and then you start driving the pliers as you're holding the handles, turning the screw, and making sure it doesn't slide off the damn thing you're trying to squish. Which it's doing. 
Uh, well, you just buy the right fitting, Greg. Okay, here we go again. Squish. Squish. And you just squish until the gap in the tool has closed up, which you can't see. I'm going to move you around for that. Okay, I'll do that. Hope that's better. Open up a little bit. Squish some more. And it's not squishing much more. Try one more. I'm sure this tool looks great on paper. Yeah, put a ding in my bed, you son of a bitch. Oh, thank you for the present. Darn jumping spiders, get off my desk. Get it out. I hate spiders. Piss me off. Damn if I know. Move over to the other one. I can see right now, if I'm going to be doing air hoses, I'm going to be making one of these to fit onto the, uh, the shop press. Now, in the PEX instructions, you have to do all this with one squeeze, or should I say one operation. You're not allowed to recrimp uh, PEX furls. And that makes some sense, because if you turn it 90 degrees, like would seem to make sense, and squish it again, and your die is not exactly round or what have you, you'll just wind up opening up another section of the crimp and, and making it expand a little bit and I guess that uneven pressure could cause leakage I don't know but that's one of the things inspectors look for is uh, if you double crimped your things maybe they think you're reusing old ones damn if I know so this is my first exposure to the crap but I'm going to double crimp it anyway because it's an air hose I'm the inspector, and I can do any damn thing I want in my shop. I just want an air fitting. That's not going to give me cuts, blisters, and, and catch up and hang on things. Okay, that is PEX tool, PEX ends. No modifications other than our... Uh, our chamfer to make it go on easier and there you have it will that be enough maybe I should leave it right here so when it explodes it won't go far I'm gonna hit the air to it but I don't know 90 100 pounds I'm hiding back here Ow. Damn, you guys are in the way all the time. Oh, is that going to work? We'll find out, because this hose gets a lot of use here at the, the uh, machine station. <laughs> machine make it sound like it's all party party and shit. Hey, where'd you go? There you are. Yeah, I suppose that could have been done better. Being more careful with... It figures the time that it went on perfectly, I scraped the back end. So, 
when you get one part fixed, another part acts up. But I think this is going to be serviceable. These things aren't expensive. It's like three, four dollars for a pack of ten of these. And I said, Ed, you got all that crap? Make your own. Um, yeah, but I don't have blocks of copper lying around or copper tubing of a uh, of a suitable material. Uh, the copper piping you get in the stores is typically hard drawn, and it's a lot thinner. This is about this is pretty thick furls here. They're twice as thick as standard copper piping. Um, the soft copper, you know, like the the lines you unroll, maybe. But I, you know, I didn't want to buy a whole roll for this yet until I figured out what I'm doing here is going to work. So this is going to get tried out and take a beating, and we'll see what happens. When it explodes, you'll hear me cussing about it on another video. Anyway, that's it for this one. So what do you take away from all this? Yes, you can use PEX to fix an air hose. These are 3 8 fittings, and this line is uh, kind of 3 8 line. It's a, it's a smaller line than typical air hose because this is a, a thin leader. This might be called quarter inch line. I don't know. My good set. So uh, this hose, while it's got air compression in it, um, comes out to about almost 13 millimeters. So I guess this would be considered a half inch hose, but it's not half inch ID. But the OD was about a half inch. So you can't use half inch squishy bits because they're actually seven eighths. You know, that shit really drives you mad, don't it? Here's some half inch crimp rings. I picked these up for the, uh, the regular size air hose. Hopefully they will work, but these are not half inch at all. These are 16 millimeter. So what are you gonna do? Either way, my hose is fixed. I'm happy. And um, if you try it, maybe you will be too. Well, that first repair has held up for many months and no sign of issues with it. So I'm going to start going through the rest of my uh, botched up repairs and clean them up as I did the first one. I'm using the same uh, size of rubber hose and a new barb. I have lightly turned off the, uh, the sharp uh, points of the barb just to make insertion easier. And so it's not so sharp inside the hose and digging into that uh, soft rubber because this hose does have some miles on it And it's a uh, not as weak as or excuse me not as strong as a, a brand new hose would be I believe with all the extra clamping pressure we're getting off of those furls that uh, As long as there's just enough there for the rubber to bite into it's going to hold just fine I have not bothered with chamfering the furls at all. I want to see how that holds up and if it um presents too sharp of an edge and makes the hose wear out quicker at that back section where it would flex against the back of the barb overuse. So this is another test. Heck, if you're going to do it, might as well find all this stuff up now. But anyway, I don't think this repair is going to take 30 minutes like the other one did. I believe just uh, scooting along and what we've learned from the first time, things should go a little bit smoother. So this is the abbreviated version of doing a hose repair using uh, PEX connections. And I'm going to shut up now and we're just going to zoom through this pretty much real time. Yep, I'm going to make you guys suffer just a little bit more. In this instance, I put the furls up all the way up on the hose to begin with and we're just gonna cram it in there and fight the friction that we have and that's another reason for taking off the sharp barbs uh, this way the hose isn't moving around in the furrows and they're all getting in about the right place I want them to be either one will work so just just trying something a little bit different I think we're ready to go do some squishing. This time I'm going to use a shot press. I ain't dorking around with them damn pliers. I thought this was going to be a separate segment. I did them both as if they're going to be on their own in case I use one over the other. So that's why I'm showing off the tool again. Because uh, I'd forgotten where I put this footage for the previous one uh, that we just spent 30 minutes looking at. But that's the superior tool. And it uh, 
doesn't really sit flat on the on the uh, on the press so I have to come up with a little scrap piece of metal I'm going to put under that first lip just to keep it from rocking around pressing on the other sizes should be fine but when you're close to that that profile there little piece of metal there just going to keep it from rocking out from underneath the, pre the piston That should do it. Let's give it the beans. Now, this part's going to take a little bit because I've got 18 inches of piston travel and it is freaking awesome. It's nice not having to reposition the cross braces to uh, fit different size parts. I mean, I just, I have lots of play and it's just the cat's ass. And uh, all you bottle jack users frantically zipping up and down on that handle can just suck it. I'm not going full ape on the lever with the, this first crimp because the material that this tool is made out of, it could be cast aluminum, could be magnesium, could be titanium. I don't know. It's non-magnetic. It seems pretty stout, but I don't want to be snapping a piece off and shooting it across the room. So I'm being kind of ginger with it uh, on the first crimp because I don't really want to break the tool at this time. I haven't made up a, uh, a replacement yet. I, hell, I haven't even measured the bores on there yet. However, it seems to be doing a pretty good job. And for giggles, let's drag out the, the go no go gauge and just see where it winds up. Not quite fitting in either of them, so I think we're going to give it a few more beans and see if we can get that clamp down all the way and, and get the tool to fully close and, and see what that does. Nothing broke, nothing shot across the room, and uh, that would pass, I guess, for some kind of inspection or other. That one, maybe not so much, but you know what? It's an air fitting. I think it'll work. I don't care what the gauge says. That's a pretty good squish on there. 